This is a day one quick guide to the Fortis Colosseum. I'll quickly go over the early wave progression just to save you some time. When you enter the Colosseum you won't have enough glory to use the bank chest so you need to use the one outside. To check when you have enough glory you can use the scoreboard and it will tell you what you have unlocked currently. On your first few attempts you want as minimal switches as possible. Some people seem to be opting to just mage only as you should be using ancients inside because they have enemies that act similar to nibblers but focus you rather than pillars. Once you get a bit more progress, you can bring in additional switches and progress a little bit more towards the skill set. Of course, this is day one. Once you get more comfortable, you can bring in each combat style and then progressively bring in a few additional switches on top of that. If you are going to do mage only, make sure you do have a shadow, otherwise go into the second gear set provided. When you enter the Colosseum, you speak to Minimus and then choose your first modifier. I always choose the far right one, where it reduces your health by 10%. When the wave begins, you want to freeze the Phrenic Warband Trio. These attack with each combat style, but they have a very short range within two tiles, so you can freeze them and then deal with the Serpent Shaman. The Serpent Shaman will only use Mage and seems to have attack range of about 10 tiles, therefore you can trap them behind the Javelin Colossus that spawn after the second wave. Each wave seems to have a reinforcement that are on a timer, therefore if you take too long, then additional mobs will spawn. The Jaguar Warrior seems to spawn on every single reinforcement wave. It attacks every 5 ticks of melee and each attack acts like a Dragon Claw spec. So be very careful when attacking with your positioning, ideally hugging the pillar when he spawns. He tends to spawn to the south. If you hug the south side of the southwestern pillar, he should get trapped. The Javelin Colossus is the next type of champion you'll face. I've quickly touched on it beforehand but he can attack from any range and will always use range. Every 4th attack he seems to attack with a projectile in the air and it lands 5 ticks later keeping in cycle with his attack speed. This can be very deadly if there's multiple of them. The final creature I'm going to touch on is the Manticore. This will show the order of its attacks. Mage being blue, green being range and red being melee. Each of these attacks will land in the order from bottom to top. You can flip these in a similar way as you would do the Ghost on Cerberus. I have seen a mixture of range being first and mage being first so keep an eye on which is the first one. They won't always be in the same order. I've yet to see any delay between a distance either. I'm not going to bother getting into the different modifiers. I should have to select these to progress through the waves regardless. I've personally found B's volatility in solar flare being very annoying but manageable in the earlier waves. And blasphemy, frailty, myopia and totemic tend to be a little easier to deal with. Thanks for watching, this should give you a little bit of a head start so you're not running in completely blind. There are a few additional mobs such as the Shockwave Colossus and the Minotaur, but you won't see these until Wave 7 onwards. Thanks for watching, if you're interested in the in-game progression videos, I've currently got a series where I just released a video of opening 1.1k hard clues. You can find this on the screen now. Best of luck, have a good one, and a bit.